Hello everyone and welcome back at Coding Boss. Today we will take a look at my code template used for my competitive programming. A code template is something that you write before a contest and usually use it every time or most of the times during competitive programming. Most competitive programming, including CodeFosses, allows you to use these pre-written templates and even allows you to share it with others as long as it's not done during the contest regarding to a specific problem. So let's take a look at my template and then you can copy this template as well for yourself or you can write your own template. So first, obviously I include the bits.std c++.h library. Then this line, this code that's commented out, is basically a new data type which is something very similar to set, but it can do two extra two good extra functions. One of them is which you can find an element based on the number. So let's say that you want to ask what the third element is. A set can't do that. You would need to look through all the elements in order. But this uh, data type can do it and it can get the element you in log n time. Then you can also get the number of elements in the in this well, I call, call this data type t, the number of elements which are the compare function is true when you compare it with this y element. Where the compare function will be anything that you provide here, in this case just stds. Most of the time you want to use the stds or std return cooperation, so you either want to sort in extending order or descending order, but you can actually provide any other function. So it will return the number of elements that are, let's say, in this example, less than y. So let's say that you have a, this kind of set with a bunch of numbers and then you want to say, uh, see how many numbers are less than a million. And then you can easily do, do it. Of course, a set can do that as well. And this is also log capital N, my capital N is the size. One more thing is that the by it has the time complexity of log capital N, the constant multiplier is a bit worse than set, so that's why I keep this commented out because I don't want to just use this if I don't need it, because it does has a slightly slower runtime, but it will be fine if you use it properly. After that, obviously I use the namespace std, and then I name my type names, the long long as ll, the long double as ld, and the unsigned long long as ull. You can name them anything, I feel like this is a really good naming, and I mostly use the ll as long block. After that I wrote some functions and presses. This good rand and high rand returns higher random values. So a random value is this function, it's a built-in function, and it returns a integer between 0 and the rand maximum. This is also a const number, and it is around 32,000. So it can only return a random number between 0 and 32,000. And of course, if you want something like a random number that returns between 0 and uh, 2, so 0, 1, or 2, you can just type this. But if you want a random number which returns higher, Potential values, let's say between a million or anything, then what you need to do is take a random number, multiply by the maximum of random number, and then add another random number with it, like this. And then you can also do the high rent function, which makes the same thing, but it also has a random number which will be multiplied by the rent max twice. So this one returns the maximum is rent max to the power of 2, here, and here, the maximum is the max to the power of 3. The reason this is good is that later we see that uh, when we want to shuffle, let's say, a random uh, vector randomly, then the random shuffle function works in a way. Actually, I think we have, we have a random shuffle, yeah. So a random shuffle works in a way that it goes through from 0 until the size, actually size minus 1, and then takes a random number between this i and the last element of the vector, just randomly, and swaps those two elements, and those through this loop. And if you think about it, it's the same as uh, 
swapping the numbers randomly. You just need to swap these values. So this is first uh, linear complexity. So kind of first. But the random shuffle between random shuffle would be something like random shuffle, and then you would just type v dot begin v dot end, similarly like the sort function like this. But this uses the built in rand function. So if you have a vector or anything with like a hundred thousand element, then when you use random shuffle, obviously the first number when we use the random function here, so in the first iteration when i is zero, then j can be only zero plus the rand then maximum, which would be only thirty two thousand, so you can swap at the end. So it wouldn't be a really good random shuffle. And one more thing is when you use random, you can see the random number and then give a number here. So if you don't see it, it will be actually deterministic what your random values will be. And it could can be found out and if someone really like wants to hack your solution, they can find out what random numbers you get and make sure that you get really the worst random numbers. It takes lots of time and effort, but it's possible to it. Do it so you can just Type this as run to time null, and now your random numbers will be seeded by the actual current time, and it will be much safer for you to use it that way. So you can just type this code anywhere, probably at the start of the main function, and then your randoms will be seeded. There are some problems that require randomness, or it can be solved with random values, and sometimes you want to use it. So let's say that you came up with a way which finds the solution in at 50% chance as random. So every time you run that, there is a chance that you find the solution. Then you can just run it with different random values multiple times, and sooner or later you will get the right solution. That's a completely correct way to solve a problem, but you need to make sure that your randoms work correctly, and you actually can get the solution uh, for every single input. Anyway, let's go back here. This is uh, a class that I call my vector, which will be inherited. If you remember from the previous videos, this is an inheritance, will be inherited publicly from the std vector. So this will be a vector. It will have all the uh, functions, everything from the vector itself, but it will have some extra functions. So when we refer to an element, so remember when we have something like v0 or v i, something you type this, you refer to the element at position i. So this is this operator, and we have a position. If you were to uh, refer to a negative element or something that's larger than the size, then you would get a runtime error. And in my vector, I actually overwrite this operator. And I say if position is less than zero, then I will set the position back to zero. So I assume if somehow we uh, type a negative number, we will want to refer to the element zero. So it would result in a runtime error. And actually, if we refer to a position which is higher than the size, I will take this vector and push back something here. This is a default value. So Whatever type I have, whatever the default value for that, I will push back the default value. So for numbers, integers, non-numbers, anything, it will be zero by default. For classes or some more complicated examples, you will push back the default constructor. So if you have a class with the default constructor, it will run and that will be pushed back. So we just push back a default value. So we actually resize the vector if we refer for something larger, and then we just need to return that position. So in this example, we will return a good uh, position. And why it's good is actually you don't need to resize the vector in the code by yourself. You can just say that v0 should be equal to 3. So if your vector, regular vector, is empty, this would be an error. But with this my vector, because we just push back value here and then change that value it will be correct 
and as you can see we take it as a reference so we can change the value by itself it's important here then we will have a print function which will print out the value and the reason i didn't overload the output operator here is because i want to have an optional parameter here if we want to actually output the size of the vector because some problems does require you us to output the size before and then the rest and some doesn't then we will have a print end line when at the end we put an end line maybe if we want to uh, shuffle it out uh, the first output after so we can have this and then we have the good random shuffle which is the same as the random shuffle i just explained but uses the good rand number so high random isn't really required here because the size can be that big so the rand to the power of 2 so the thousand to the power of 2 will be plenty of random number so it will be enough and this sub function just swaps these two values then i have a read function so what this does is takes a type of n and also this type will be the size so integer unsigned integer long long any these number types and then we take it as a reference and we will have a boolean uh, parameter here which will represent if we want to read the size as well or not so if this is so when we assign a value here that means that we don't have, so no, this is an optional parameter we don't need to put it there in the code so we can call it like v dot read n so this is correct but we can also call it v dot read n and then let's say true this is also correct so you don't have to provide that parameter if you don't provide it will be false or you can provide it and then it will be true or whatever typed so this means if we want to take n from the input or not if we do then we will take the n from the input otherwise we will use the value the, that we already had for n and we take the reference so if we want to read it then we can uh, change the value as well and then we just take the input for that operator and if you remember previously this would be an error for a vector regular vector because this operator would return with an error but because we overloaded it this returns well so now we can take a uh, vector with one line of code so let's say that we have n numbers and then uh, so we have a number n and we have that many elements in an array or a vector that's a really common input so what would you do if you come here is type uh, my vector long long v let's say that it has a uh, long long type then you type v dot read n and true and then we will read the n value and then we will read the values of course you can still use the regular input but this is so much faster to type so if we go come back here this is really good and we also have a push to operate uh, function which is rarely used but i wrote it so we can push to, push to a certain position in the vector after that i have my queue which is from the std queue and the reason for this is i realized that lots of times in queue and priority queues i want to take an element out of the queue and then also uh, pop it so i want to take the front element and then pop it and there isn't a function in the queue and another thing is that you can see uh, the priority queue has uh, the function top and the queue has the front and lots of times i try to use the top in a queue as well so in order to solve this i actually assign the top function which will do the same same as front and one more thing that i change if the queue is empty i will just return a default value so it doesn't get into an error but i can still check if it's empty or not and then i have this take function which will return the front element that also takes it out and this saves some time 
especially if you need to, need to use it later. So let's say that you would you want to do a BFS, that for search function for a graph, and then what you would do in the end that let's say that your queue is Q. If Q is not empty, then you will continue the search. So you will have a value, or let's say that it's a long log. So you would need to assign the value q.front, and then you need to pop the value, and then you need to call the PFS for the next step. So as you can see, this takes a time. But for this function with the tag, you can just say that PFS q.tag. And if we will, if you see here, we will take the front value, then pop, and return only after the pop. So we will take out the value and then return. So this saves some time and lots of times it's used this way anyway. So lots of times when you take a look at the uh, front element, you also want to take it out of the queue. So this is the, my take function. Um, I also have print where I print out all of the elements with take and with end line as well, but they are rarely used. After that, I have the my priority queue. So in this, this is also like a template and it's inherited from the std priority queue. As you can see, I always used the std vector as a container for the priority queue. So in my priority queue, I will have only two types, the value types and then the comparison function. So for the type of the value, A, and then the comparison function. So this is like, let's say, STDS. So why this is good is that uh, when I want to type, so let's say that you want a regular priority queue. So you would, and you want it to sort in this unique order. So you would say long, long and vector long long and then you would say std greater or std less depending on which one you want if you don't want to use default or your comparison function but but this typing out this vector is very unnecessary because i want to use that always anyway so in the my priority queue i think i also have an example below yeah you don't need to say the vector, you just say std greater as a comparison function, std less or any of your comparison function. So where were we? Right here. And we also have the take function just as the in the queue. And we have the print and print and line. So these are just like these containers with uh, extra functions. Now for a virtual class, we have this mod ll, which would be a mod long long lab. And we have a mod value here, I can change it depending on the problem. So I would say that this mod long long mod value should be this. And as you can see, it's static, so it's the same for all the uh, elements in mod long long. And I change it depending on the problem statement, and if I have something that I need to calculate based on modulo, then I have all of the operations here defined, and I can just use it as a regular number. So we can set the mod value to zero, that's the default constructor, or we can set an integer there, or long long, or another mod long long, and we can get the mod value, but we can't actually modify it, you can see that this is a private variable. And I have this mod power function which uses the fast power. And right there we have this fast power. We can take the factor, we can take the choose. So all of these regular uh, combinatorical functions are created. And this rack is actually how you divide by modulo. So you can see that this division uses this 
right? So the way you divide by a uh, modulo is that you take the power of that value to the modulo minus two power. So this, th this would be one per x, this select function takes the uh, division of it. And the way we do this with modulo is you uh, take the modulo minus two power. And we have all these operators overrided, so we can divide, multiply, equal, and we can just basically calculate it, edit it like if it were to be a normal integer numbers. So I overrided every single operator here, uh, which you can check if it's equal. We can assign a value. We can see it's if it's less or greater. So all of these operators, we can add the plus equal, minus equal times equal everything here. So these are just like codes that overload these operators. And plus plus, minus minus, of course, taking care of the edge case when it, 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 the modulo. Then we have this bunch of print options as well, when we print out the value of the modulo. With a space or with an end line, so everything real. Then I like to have a simple string for the yes, and then a new line break. This is outside of the modulo long press now. And for the no, because lots of the problems require you to answer with yes or no. And then I have these normal numbers. These are some really common variable names. I have a priority queue here. I have my vector. It's been commented out because I'm not sure where I want to use it. And then I have these regular main function with the test cases. And yes, so let's go ahead and change this a bit. So I will have. The soft function here, as I showed in the previous video, and now I can return from here and continue with the test cases. So this is my default code for code versus competitions, and I can use them pretty pretty comfortably, and it saves me a lot of time during coding. If you want to copy my code, you can go ahead and check out my profile. My profile uh, in code was his, his name is S. Patrick, and in the submissions part, you can see my previous submissions. Most of the time, I use this default code, so you can just go ahead and select any of my submissions. Uh, in the previous competition, if uh, you haven't seen that video, check out my previous video about the division 3 round. I did not use that default code, I just used normal code. In most of my downs, I use this default code, so you can go ahead here and press copy, and then you have my default code, and then you can just paste it, and you will have my solution to a specific problem, so you can just go ahead and delete this part. So you can see that I have this here, so you can just delete everything here because this is the part of for it, and these variables and everything, and you will be left with my default code. Or you can write your default code as well. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, and see you in the next video.